Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to ProLine, the longest-running sports handicapping show in America. I'm John Cranton in Las Vegas, joined by Jeff Saad, who's been running Las Vegas Sports Services for 14 years, and, of course, world champion handicapper Jim Feist. We've got a slate of college basketball games to look at this final weekend, as well as an ACC tournament preview. But first, Jim, you guaranteed your shadow shocker game of the year last Saturday. You delivered with Virginia. They were a four-point favorite that destroyed Syracuse 75 to 56. You have another game of the year release going Saturday as part of a guaranteed three-team parlay. That's right. You know, when you say shadow shocker, it's got to step out from the shadows and do something absolutely shocking, and it did. You know, whoever would think that Virginia would be that much more powerful than the Syracuse team at this point. Shadow Shocker game of the year. It was there. Virginia 75-56. Small chalk favorite. I got a three-team basketball parlay on Saturday, including my college rivalry game of the year. That's my college rivalry game of the year. It's a $200 package. But you can get it for this unbelievably low price. Now, I could say ninety dollars, I could say nine hundred dollars, I could but it's nine bucks. Nine dollars. Nine grocery dollars. This is what you carry in your pocket when you go to the seven eleven store. Nine bucks. You get this special package and a special guarantee. You go three and oh or you play right through the tournament for free. Sign up early. Not only do you get those three games, but you get also a high roller going tonight. It's a special package. You know, we're at the end of the college basketball season. We're making money. Jeff's making money. We're all making very good money right now. I want you to get on board with this. I want you to have these three games, and I want you to have the high roller. $9. Call 1-866-841-1655. That's 1-866-841-1655. All right, and Jeff Saad, you're off a 10-1 and weekend, a remarkable run over the weekend. That included your five-play countdown on Saturday that you gave away on this show last week. You ended up going a perfect 5-0 and Saturday. Best bet weekends on the – best bet winners on the weekends with Oklahoma, the L.A. Clippers, the Chicago Bulls. Uh, I don't want to put any pressure on you, but after 10-1, and what do you have for an encore? <laughs> well, that, it is. It is. Uh, it's hard to beat a five and zero day, especially if only five dollars. So, all you had called for the five play countdown for five bucks, you went five and zero, and it goes back even further than that. Since February twenty third, I'm twelve and five in the NBA, fourteen and six in college. That's a combined twenty six and eleven, seventy percent winners. This week I have uh, a trifecta on Saturday. You're going to get three plays, including my payback game of the year. If you sign up early, you'll get a high roller play tonight. That's four plays and off, just $15. Call LVSS at 1-866-575-8916, 1-866-575-8916. All right, and Mr. Vegas has a special play right through the April 7th tournament finale, the championship game, for 35 bucks. going to include a pair of conference games of the month going this weekend he's three and one run with these conference games of the month you can sign up with mr vegas 35 bucks you get over a month's worth of plays 1-866-896-1627 all right guys our first game is going to be a friday night game uh, in the ivy league harvard yale jim a rivalry battle harvard is the powerhouse team in the ivy this year 24 and 4 overall record 11 and 1 in the ivy but Yale is right behind, and it's not just a rivalry game, too, but a revenge game as college, as Yale won the earlier meeting between these two as a 12-and-a-half-point dog. Jim, I know you like to look at matchup situations and even emotion with these rivalry games. That's certainly going to be on tap up Friday night, isn't it? Harvard, you know, Harvard's a, a very strong team. We've all heard about this team. They're 24-4 and four straight up. 11 and 1 in the Ivy, 5 and 0 ATS run. Uh, you know, this is a, a top club. People don't really follow the Ivies that much, but those of us here in Vegas that like to make money like to keep track of this. I mean, Yale doesn't have the same kind of record that they do. Uh, they're 14 and 10, 8 and 2 though in the Ivies, which is very, very similar record. Uh, Yale's home from a four-game trip where they were 2 and 2 straight up in ATS. They're averaging 67 points per game. That's 274th in, in, the, in the country. Uh, like I said, most people don't follow the Ivies, and those of us who pay attention to basketball and all the opportunities out there, 
to make money. We look at this league very seriously because when you bet on an Ivy team and you win, you get the same kind of dollars you do than when you bet on a Duke or a North Carolina. It's a very interesting game. Yeah, Jeff, when these teams met on February 8th, Jim mentioned how Yale is struggling on offense. Well, they haven't been a good shooting team really for the entire season, but on that night they were. They shot 51% at Harvard as a 12.5-point dog. Uh, was that an aberration, or does Yale uh, have Harvard's number at all? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago we talked about revenge games, and one thing you have to look at, if a team shoots really well the first game, it's unlikely they'll do the same in the next game because the losing team will make adjustments, and plus it's just hard to shoot that well two games in a row against the same team. Harvard's won six in a row right now. they cover covered the last five games. The last five games they've won by an average of 25 points, 15-7 and seven against the spread this season, 11-1 and one in the Ivy League, Yale was 9-3. and three. If Yale wins this game and then beats Dartmouth, and then Harvard uh, is upset by Brown, they could end up tied, then they'll play a tiebreaker game. That's very unlikely, but at least Yale has some hope here. Uh, the revenge game, uh, the first game was 74-67, making this a revenge game. Uh, I don't think uh, Yale is going to shoot that well again. And also in the first game, Yale made 10 more free throws than Harvard did. That's unlikely also. Yale shoots only 42.6% of the season. So in this revenge matchup, in this situation, I'm going to lean, lean toward uh, Harvard, John. Yeah, just to give you an example of Harvard's dominance this season, their scoring margin in the Ivy League, plus 16.6. That's tops in the Ivy, and the second-best team is Brown at plus 3.9. Yale, incidentally, is third at plus 3.1. Uh, Harvard's certainly going to be motivated because they can, they've already clinched at least a tie for the Ivy title, so they could win it outright right here. Uh, this Yale team not only beat them, but is playing consistently well. Eight and two runs straight up, seven and three against the spread. The way I look at this game, though, is defense, because Yale is also on a seven and two run under the total. When you get these rivalry games, you can get great defense with so much at stake. Yale is home from a four-game trip. It wasn't very good, just two and two straight up in ATS. They are second, though, in the Ivy in scoring defense, just 62 points per game when Yale wins a game, they're 9-5 and five under the total that next game. And when Harvard wins a game, which they recently did, they're 10-3 and three under the total that next game. So that's the way I'm going to look at this. A dogfight with a lot, of, lot more defense than offense on Friday night. All right, guys, let's take a look at a game going on Saturday in the ACC. It's North Carolina at Duke. These teams are no strangers to each other. They're the top two teams. Uh, I'm sorry, they're not the top two teams in the ACC, but they're ranked third and fourth in the conference, so certainly going to get the fandom riled up. Uh, Jim, North Carolina comes in having won 12 in a row, have been a little bit shaky of late. Uh, they blow that big lead on Monday, uh, nearly blew it against Notre Dame, had to hang on for a 63-61 to win, but still 9-3 and three spread run for the Tar Heels. The first meeting sailed under the total of 150. Duke shot just 43% on the road. 5 of 22 from long range. However, they're undefeated at home in conference play. Uh, do you think they can make it to 9-0 and here? Well, they're going to be favored to do so. you got to remember they were two-point favored on the road at North Carolina, which if you extrapolate, you're looking at 8 to 10-point favored at home, which is a ridiculous number against North Carolina in a rivalry game. But mathematically, that's probably what it should be especially when you consider that they're looking at an 8-0 run at home in the ACC, and they're an 8-3 in the one run in the ATS as well. But you know, North Carolina has flaws. Their two-point defense is very, very poor, and their free-throw shooting is absolutely incredibly bad You know, for a top-ranked team. The ACC is down this year. I don't expect these teams to do very well when they get into, into playing up – up class uh, type talent going down the road, but in this game you got to look for Duke to come back and get a win here. Now the point spread is going to make a big difference. I'm not going to lay eight, eight, eight or ten points, but uh, I, I look for Duke to come back and win the game. Uh, if if the number is low enough, I'll be on Duke. Otherwise, I'll probably pass. Well, Jeff, the first meeting February 20th, North Carolina won at home 74 to 66 as a plus two dog. Uh, we know North Carolina, Duke is going to be fired up for this home finale, but I have to wonder about North Carolina, the way they played Monday. Uh, is their focus on the upcoming tourney or, or, or overlooking this game at all? 
I don't think North Carolina ever overlooks Duke. It's just one of the it's one of the best games of the year in college basketball. It gets top ratings every year. And also, Roy Williams has done one of his greatest coaching jobs. And he's been a great coach for a long time. But this year the team was in disarray earlier in the season. They lost three games in a row beginning of January. And then, then since then they had won 12 in a row. The first nine they covered a spread. The last three have been close. But they do, as Jim said, they do have some flaws there. They barely beat Notre Dame uh, as a 12-point favorite. Uh, they shot just three of 12 from three-point range, missed 12 free throws. So um, when no, when you have those situations, uh, it doesn't look good for when you when you if you want to go far in the, not only the ACC tournament but the NCAA tournament. Uh, in the first meeting, Carolina was behind most of the game. They came back and strong at the end. They won 74-66. It wasn't it was really closer than that. Uh, Duke now has won 11 out of 13. Uh, in the first meeting, they shot just five of 22 from three-point range. That probably won't happen again. Uh, just as Jim said, it depends on what the line is here. I'm not, uh, I'll probably lay off the game because I don't really don't see a, a, an edge here. But if it's Duke a small favorite, I go with Duke. I doubt that's going to happen. It'd probably be more like five or six, or maybe even even more points than that, John. But I'll probably lay off this game. Okay, well, I'm going to take a look at the total because the first meeting went under, but I see this as really an up-tempo shootout game. All the numbers support that. This Duke team has plenty of offense, top 30 in the nation in scoring. In the ACC, the third in three-point shooting, over 39%. They're number one in free throws at 75%, so reliable from the line. And they're number one in scoring over 74 points per game. The defense, though, of Duke is not one of the best Duke defensive teams we've seen in a while. They're 13th out of 15 AC teams, ACC teams in field goal shooting allowed, and 45%, that's fairly soft. And the North Carolina loves to push the ball into the low post. They should be able to get some high-percentage shots this game. North Carolina on a 4-3 and three run over the total. These teams are 1-2 and two in the ACC in scoring. Notre Dame was able to slow the pace down on Monday night, but I don't see Duke at home doing that. They're going to run and gun and bomb away from long range. As far as winning the game, Jim mentioned the free throw shooting for North Carolina, 63% in ACC play, just awful. That is probably in an environment like this is going to hurt them as far as winning the game. But I do think it's going to be uh, an, a game that's going to be up-tempo and probably a lot more scoring than that first game. All right, before we take a look at the uh, ACC tourney preview, uh, you can get some free plays sent right to your cell phone every day if you want to get them from Dave Koken. Just text Koken to 313131. And, Jim, you have free plays as well that can go right to everybody's cell phone each and every day. Absolutely. You can just text WINNER, W-I-N-N-E-R, to 313131, and we'll send you free plays right to your cell phone each and every day. That's WINNER, W-I-N-N-E-R, to 313131. Okay, we just took a look at North Carolina and Duke. Let's take that a step further, guys, and take a look at the upcoming ACC tourney. Some of the best teams and some of the sleeper teams. Uh, we'll start with you, Jim. Virginia, you know, they're certainly not a sleeper team, but are they built right now to win uh, three games in three nights? Well, based on what they've done so far this year, I mean, this team is 25-5 and five straight up. They're 14-2 and two at ATS. They're in a two... Well, under the total, they've been, they play good defense. Brogan, uh, Brogan and, 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 uh, Harris, uh, lead the team. Uh, strong club. I mean, in this, in this environment, in the ACC, which I'm not really that high on any of the teams, I think Virginia is actually the best of the group. I think they can win it all. Can they stay focused to do so? Uh, that's always an issue, especially after you win the, the regular season. But reality is, every team in this in this league is flawed. Take a look at Pittsburgh, for example. I mean, here's a team that's 22 and seven, but this team is six and 15 against the uh, you know against the spread. And then they blew a game last night against North Carolina State. It is an 11 point favorite. But this is a totally flawed team. May, it may be come down to coaching, uh, not doing a good job uh, keeping them ready. Syracuse peaked early. Number one in the country, but uh, now recently they're two six and one against the spread, twenty six and three uh, straight up. But they've lost those three games recently. So, uh, like I said, I'm not real high on these teams coming out of the league, but in the league, I do think that Virginia is the best of the group. Well, Jeff, let's take a closer look at that. The Syracuse team that Jim just mentioned. 
26 and 3 record is sizzling. However, they're not covering games of late and even have trouble winning on a 2 and 6 1 ATS run. I mean, uh, what's the real orange crush or, or are they primed to get crushed in the upcoming tourney? Well, this it's a, a team we've seen from Jim Beheim last few years. What they do, they play uh, a relatively easy non-conference schedule. Sometimes they wait until January to play a true road game, and then when the conference season starts, they have problems. Uh, they only had one true road game before conference uh, started this year. It was St. John's in December, and then uh, and now they've lost three out of four. And as usual, just like last year, they, they're not a good shooting team. And those three losses that they've had in the last couple of weeks, Boston College, Duke, and Virginia, they shot. Uh, combined 36% from the field. And uh, I know they have this zone defense that keeps them in all the games. But once in a while, you just have to outscore a team, and, and they're not capable of doing it uh, because they're just, they're just not great shooters. Tyler Ennis, 41%. C.J. Fair, 43%. So that, that's the problem that Syracuse had this year, and they had the same problem last year. Uh, so that's, that's why, uh, even though they, you know, they definitely every year they, they have a chance to go far in the tournament, but that would be the reason that they don't because they just they just don't have uh, the offense, and we, we saw that on uh, Saturday against Virginia. Well, I'm going to take a look at this uh, Pitt team because I think they have the makeup and the balance to be a have a good run in this uh, tournament when you play so many games back to back. First of all, as Jim mentioned, they're not covering games six fifteen and one spread run. However, they are. On a recent five and three run under the total, and when you, when I take a close look at them, terrific inside game with Patterson and Zana, both seniors, and then the six eight freshman Mike Young. What they do is they like to go down into the low post, get those high percentage shots. They started the season eighteen and zero when they score more than twenty five points in the paint, but when they don't, just four and seven. That's something that I think you're going to see them go to down low for high percentage shots during the tourney, and then the balance overall. I mean, they're fifth in the ACC in defense, allowing just over 40% shooting. They're second in the conference in steals, over 6.5 per game. And the offense is second in assists. So they do a lot of things well. And uh, I think that they can probably excel uh, in the tourney when playing those games close together. And keep in mind that when they win a game, they're really good at over the total, 25-1 and one over the total following a win. Uh, Jim, another team uh, that wears orange, not Syracuse, but Clemson down in South Carolina. Uh, how are they built uh, for tournament play? Now, it's one of the poorest offensive teams in the country, 62 points per game, 337th in the nation on offense. But uh, they stay alive, uh, you know, strangling opponents on defense, third in the ACC in points, allowed 59 points a game, ninth in field goal defense, uh, but like Jeff said a couple of minutes ago with Syracuse, every once in a while you have to score some points. Uh, you, you, somebody's going to get hot against you, and, and uh, that that's going to be a, an issue. You know, when you look at these teams, they have a couple high-scoring teams in this league, and then you have some defensive clubs like Virginia, Clemson, and um, what was I going to just say, Syracuse. And it, it's... At some point, you've got to open up the offense. You've got to get it done on offense. Now, I'm not against defense at all. I'm a big defensive guy. Uh, defense wins championships, but I don't think Clemson has the, has the mojo to do that. Jeff, you see other teams that may surprise or uh, slip down the stretch? Well, Florida State uh, is one team that has a big incentive in the tournament because they need to they need to have a good showing to, because just to have a chance to go to the NCAA tournament. This team uh, they have to be Syracuse on Saturday for one thing. But this team has size, depth, and balance. Uh, they play great defense. It's kind of surprising that some of those have lost 11 games this year. They're three and eight against the spread uh, the last 11 games. I, I can't really figure this team out because they do have talent. They do have everything, but they just uh, it might it might be the same problem with uh, the teams the other t uh, Syracuse. They don't have enough offense. But uh, Florida State, if you're looking for a team that has motivation in the ACC tournament, it would be Florida State because they need to win and they need to win. Uh, maybe even go to the semifinals or even win it to get have a chance to go to the NCAA tournament, John. Well, I'll take a look at NC State, and uh, and I'll get right to the point. This team is going to take a quick fall, no matter where they play in the postseason. And on the plus side, they're they're a one man show behind the six nine sophomore T.J. Warren. Just phenomenal numbers, over twenty three points per game, seven rebounds. He had thirty six points against North Carolina, and then the next game against Virginia Tech, thirty one back to back games. 
The thing is, he took 21 and 25 shots in those games. And against Carolina, they were up 34-26 at the half and eventually lost in overtime. NC State was just 19 of 31 from the free throw line. And to put it in perspective in that game, the team took 60 shoot two shots and he took 25. They have one other guy in Ralston Turner who's pretty good. Only two guys in double figures, but there's a lot to dislike for me about this NC State team. They came off a recent loss at Miami, didn't even show up, 85 to 70. To put that in perspective, the Hurricanes were the, sec- were the worst shooting team in the conference. They shot 58.7%, set a season high for scoring, and NC State had the lead at the half and still got blown out. They were only 16 of 24 from the line. The negatives are plentiful. They're a bad rebounding team. They're the worst three-point shooting team in the ACC, 29%. They're second to last in scoring defense, and they're horrible at the free throw line, 65%. That ranks ninth in the NCC. So I give a thumbs down to this NC State team. All right, Jay, let's go through some of the offers we have. We'll start with you, Jeff. You're off that 10-1 and weekend, a perfect 5-0 and with that five and zero oh, of that five play countdown you had, uh, I'm not going to ask you to go eleven and zero. Oh, but what do you have coming up this weekend? Well, I'm going to try, but this week I have uh, four plays. You're going to get uh, a trifecta Saturday. Plus, if you sign up early, you get a high roller tonight. Four plays that will include my payback game of the year. It's off for fifteen dollars. Call LVSS one eight six six five seven five eight nine one six one eight six six five seven five eight nine one six. A trifecta, a high roller, the payback game of the year, off of fifteen dollars. One eight six six five seven five eight nine one six. All right, and you can get the rest of the tournament right through April 7th with Mr. Vegas for 35 bucks. That's plays every day, including a pair of games of the month going this weekend. 1-866-896-1627. And, Jim, you hit that Shadow Shocker game of the year last Saturday. You just talked about Virginia and the ACC. That was the play. It wasn't even close. And you have uh, another game of the year coming up this Saturday for those who might have missed out. I do have a college rivalry game of the year coming up on Saturday. That's part of a three-game package that, uh, let's call it the college parlay on Saturday. But, you know, of course, you can play them all, all separately as well as parlay them as well. That's $200 online, but you can do it for nine. You can get this whole package and a high roller for nine small grocery dollars. That's right. Not ten bucks, not twenty bucks, not a hundred bucks, nine small grocery dollars. Make the call one eight six six eight four one sixteen fifty five. You get the three game package on Saturday, you get a high roller going tonight, and you get a guarantee that if the three games don't all win, that's right, don't all win, you get the turning for free as well. Nine bucks, one eight six six eight four one sixteen fifty five. All right, make sure you take advantage with these offers from these Vegas pros. Remember, they live and breathe these games day and night. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Good luck with the games, and we'll see you next week with another edition of Pro Life.